ladies and gentlemen, guess who's here with a with a not live episode? Weird. Episode 101. I know. We're back to a normal episode today. Love it. I was just thinking about this before I went out and did field work on the live, and I was like, you know, we're back to business, back to normal episode, doing our thing, and, you know, on our way to the next milestone. Like, to me, it's like a very near milestone, I guess, but 104 is like two full years worth of podcasts, which is kind of crazy. So that's a very Dude. weird. We'll probably won't celebrate that one in the, in the fashion that we did before, but still a cool milestone. And then I think for me, Rob, it's episode 200 is the next yeah. milestone. Dude, it's, uh, I think I, if I'm like setting goals, because soon we'll have the in the bag YouTube channel up, um, mm-hmm. and like goals are by 200. I would love to have, so that's a hundred episodes, obviously, uh, by goal 200, I would love to be between like probably 10 to 20,000 subs on that channel would be, yeah, that'd be great. incredible. Mm-hmm. But Hey, we'll give you all the details on that. Um, tentatively speaking, that possibly is going live next week. We've got some internal things we're discussing and make sure we can make the filming and stuff work next week. But when Robbie's up here, which is always exciting. Um, but hopefully, you know, maybe next week, definitely by the following week, we'll have the episode or the channel up and ready to go. And, you know, everybody counts as many people can go over there and subscribe. That helps us out a ton. And then also, you know, drive us to do some more content over there. We've talked about a bunch of content you all want to see different things you want to see. And that's a great place to do it. So I'm looking forward personally to getting that up and running. Dude, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. Mm-hmm. Personally, I can't wait, but also can't wait. We've got a very special guest, longtime listener from like probably episode one. Uh, yeah, like I'm sure. pretty sure Wes has been around from the beginning. Uh, and Wes is a dear friend of mine, uh, helps out in my discord uh, a whole lot for the birdie fam um, and has recently lost a disc near and dear to him. And so we were talking and he, in fact, said, if only there was a platform of experts that could help me try to dial in this spot that I'm missing after everything had gone down. And I was like, Wes, it's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, brought me to like a like a Rafiki moment of eat, eat time. So, yeah, we'll have a good day with it, Brad. I'm excited. Ladies and welcome. gentlemen, welcome into the West, the podcast, the West, the West Side podcast. Here we West go. Side Here we go. Uh, West Side with no no actual West Side in the bag. West, uh, not West. But West, side. West, West of so. the West Side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome in, West. How you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? <laughs> we're, well, we're doing great. Our transitions are not on point right there per se, but we'll we'll get back there. We'll get back to it. I was going to say yeah. we need to restart over. Are we good? Like, <laughs> nah. Hey, no, we, we can't do that. We, we, we just send it all, you know, good, the bad, you know, I throw live people see all the bad. So we're, that's what we're about. Fair here. enough. We'll grow together. Fair enough. Yeah. It's uh, it definitely, for those of you behind the scenes, something that if you were, you'll always know if you were ready on when we recorded episode one oh one because some of you are going to get to hear that intro twice. Uh, that's true. But 12 of you. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but it's it's a great time. Uh, we are we're dialed in. We got Wes here. Uh, Wes, I'm excited excited for this because um, I think this disc that we're gonna end up recommending. Uh, we're gonna end up talking distance drivers, uh, which is fun. Um, but I I'll think... go ahead and say it. I'll go ahead and say it. This one was not even close. Like this is not even close. All right. The the two disc I tried. You, you might have put this disc in my hand and then like a trash can lid. Not that the other disc was trash, but like that's just how good this other <laughs> disc was. Like it, it made me forget about all other that's, discs. I mean, I may just bag a bag of only these discs. That's high praise. Yeah. I, yeah. Dude, it's... Especially uh, for you, because I, again, you're one of the rare people that I feel like I know, well, not one, I know you, but number two, like I kind of know your game a little bit, like from a, a, like a far stretch, and Robbie really knows your game, so... Right. This I can't wait. I can't wait. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Well, Wes, we I know your game. Brad's familiar with your game. Let's let the people get to know your game. And uh, we set you up. I was like longtime listener, but we've had to prep to get Wes on the show. Uh, like we just had to find the right. I time. mean, it only took you guys a hundred episodes of practice to be ready for me. So, right. 
we had to make sure we were 100 percent prepared for you to be on here and here it is we were not prepared we went live on accident but <laughs> you're here anyway so we can we're, only we're go flustered. up from here uh, yeah no worries but uh wes we got a couple questions we ask uh the first being how long you've been playing so i have been heavy heavy into disc golf since late summer early fall of 21 um i played for probably two and a half three years immediately out of high school back in like 08 to or probably 09 to 2012 um and then my buddies that i played with went off to college i didn't have anybody to play with i you know put my my little end of a shoulder bag full of dx discs on the shelf and then picked it back up after going to my wife's family reunion and some of her cousins had brought their bags to do field work while they were being antisocial. and i was like hey that sounds awesome um and immediately fell back in love with it dude very cool that that itch it's one of those like i know a lot of folks have never done field work before like truly i know there are so many disc golfers that have never gone to a field to throw and they're like because it just sounds really boring but to me personally like i feel like when you get the chance sometime to just go do some field work if you've been struggling lately not only will it like help fixing your game sometimes but it also just can remind you of like getting to see discs fly uh, which I know for us, especially it's like a big passion. Like you want to see those big discs, like those big shots pan out and things like that. Mm -hmm. Not that you're afraid of the woods cause you crush in the woods, but, um, let's talk distances, uh, because you are, you're a little further thrower than I would say our traditional guests. So if we put you in a field and we were like, Hey, Wes, we'll put this basket X amount of feet away from you. Uh, how far are you reaching that basket? on like some golf lines and even some max distance lines forehand and backhand. So I would say backhand, I'm pretty comfortable out to like 375. Um, I, you know, I was doing some field work trying to find this spot that we're going to talk about today. And um, my, my helper that was gathering my discs kept walking to about 360. And I mean, I was like, it was like he put a wall there and I was just parking him every time. Um, but I was getting some, you know, in a, on a course, I feel like 375, I can, I can normally reach the circle. So, you know, that could be 340. That could be whatever. Um, max distance rips. I've, I've hit 400 a couple times, um, like during round play. Um, and then, you know, you put me on the right hill with the right wind. I've, I've hit, 495 according to you disc absolute max rip but i'm not counting that up as a usual event that's fair forehand um in a wide open field if i hit it perfectly 200 maybe i mean robbie knows my forehand is hot trash i have zero faith in it i trust the government more than i trust my forehand um it's it's bad. <laughs> and there's the there's the quote of the as uh, someone the yeah. as someone throwing that as a comment and it's uh if you will if this statement resonates with your soul, click this button. Yeah. Uh that's getting all the likes on this one. That's uh, funny. What a time. What a time. Uh yeah, no, I would agree. Your forehand is <laughs> it's it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> uh so I'm not gonna say that it's hot trash. I'm not, but I am gonna say that it is something that we're trying to grow. Some I, I will say to, get, to oh. give myself a little bit of forehand credit, I can forehand putters, I can forehand lid type discs better than a lot of the forehand players that I know. Um, but you put like a five speed in my hand and I could not tell you where it's going to end up. Anything above that, it's, it's sketchy. Hi. And we're going to, we will, we will continue to work on it. That's uh, goals of 2024 get west more beforehand and win oh. ma2 uh, i've already got like, one ma2 win well yeah win win more ma2 yeah. i should say uh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're back in the 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 fighting phase yeah. so uh okay so let's take you and put you on the putting green and we're like okay here on the putting green we got you lined up 10 putts from 15 feet 10 putts from 25 10 putts from 40 feet how many are you making at each station so i did this yesterday um I did it twice, so I, I have 20 samples, but um, 15 feet, I made 19 out of 20. 
um, 25 feet, I made 16 out of 20, and then 40 feet, I made five. So right. putting is definitely like snuck up and become a, a stronger part of my game. Um, and I'm not going to say I'm the best putter in the world. I'm no Marweed or Yuli or whoever's the best right now. But for the 900 rated player that I am currently until next week's update and it goes down, um, you know, among the top end of MA3, MA2, I'm, I'm one of the better putters in my area. I, I feel confident in saying that. And I, I appreciate that. That's Brad. I know you got to play yesterday. Um, and just watching, uh, the five people that are on that card, how much did that, like, did putting come into play, especially on like the shorter layout of hideaway? So, um, Jason actually gave me a very nice compliment this morning. He said, quote, that is the best I've ever seen you putt. He's like, your putt just is on. And he's like, he's, he said that. If I walked up to a putt, he said that he knew I was going to make it yesterday. So it's definitely like the the butter's been a, like a relief to my putting. So I would say that um, anything inside of twenty five feet, I'm pretty much made yesterday without even having to think too much about. It. I made some longer ones too, yeah. um, and I I do think that is probably the difference. And because I mean I I played a I would say I played a really good round yesterday at Hideaway. Um, I went three down on the front nine and then I, I made some bad choices on the back cause I was trying to beat Kyle, um, which I really wanted to beat Kyle. He beat me by one stroke. Um, but I will say probably to your, just to your point, Wes, like that putting like element is the difference between my like top third and middle third. Like if my putt is on, then I feel confident and I play the rest of my game well, because I'm like, okay, there's a lot, a lot less pressure that if I land okay, I don't need to land like five feet from the basket today. I can land like 30 feet out and feel pretty decent. So it takes a lot of uh, like pressure from approaches, takes a lot of pressure from even tee box shots, especially on a shorter course like hideaway. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, little... Robbie acting as, you know, my coach for the last, oh, we're in the middle of year two now, I think. I, I think the most common text that he will get mid round from me is just like, my putt is off today. And like, it won't be like, Hey, I can't hit a line. I can't, you know, it's, it's always just my putt is, it's not working. Like if, if there's a disaster, that's what the cause is. Yeah. Putting, putting makes or breaks or breaks around. I firmly believe that. So yeah. I even go to, uh, Vinny was on tour life. So of course it's one of the, it's one of the episodes that I watch the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. because if Calvin Heiberg's there, I'm probably listening. Yeah. Uh, that's not an offense to tour life, just more of a love of, uh, Calvin Heiberg. Uh, I'll listen to a whole smash box episode. If yeah. Shout shot. out to Melton for being um, on there too. Melton's always a good time, dude. I, amen. Amen. I will say watch the video, uh, not the audio version. Cause the podcast version, I literally was watching some of it live, didn't notice it. And then I went to finish it on Spotify and Melton, it sounds like is trying to like send messages, uh, via like uh, Morse code because he's like smacking the bottom of his phone, the whole podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so if you listen to the audio version, y'all tough listen. I think he said just, his phone died and, twice. Okay. I don't know if he was like trying to jam the charger in there or what, but anyway, wild uh but uh Vinny and then we're talking about uh scrambling as a stat and how scrambling is tough because you know uh if you don't go be that much your scramble stays higher but also scrambling is also a putting stat and so Vinny was like I'm a good putter so it's probably why my scrambling is so high is because I don't have to put it as close as other people do because I just make the putt and I was like that's interesting. Yeah, you, you uh, can cover, it, so this carries all the you way can cover up. up a lot of mistakes with a, a 30 foot and in putt. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say even a 20 foot and in putt, like imagine with all the MA three tournaments that you see things like that. Like even yeah, yesterday, I know if you're looking at hideaway, you've got Jason, Nate, uh, Brad, Kyle, Clayton, I guarantee you Clayton shot like 11 down or something like that. He shot 11 down. And he did not miss. I, I can, I bet my life that he didn't miss 20 foot putts. Uh, he but, only missed one putt, I think, yesterday, and it was from like 50 feet. Yeah. So you take the rest of the crowd, and it's like, I can almost guarantee that, like, yeah, someone messed up a 25 or in 
for every other person on the card at least once during the round. So I feel like for MA3, circle one is is the deciding factor. Like if you can hit in circle one and MA3, you're going to win tournaments. Um, mm -hmm. My experience so far in MA2 has been you probably need a little more distance. Um, sometimes, you know, there's there's holes that are pars in MA3 that need to be birdies in MA2, and that's just going to keep going up as you go up. But you can cover up a lot if you're trying to win MA3, MA4. Just make your putts. And not to get caught up on putting or like Clayton's putting, because I know I can go on a tangent with him, but I just want to say I desire to have, and anyone that's played with him can vouch for me, but I desire, like, the confidence I have when I step up to like a five foot putt, like a tap in, he has that same confidence at 20 feet. Like, he, he doesn't even, like, he doesn't pause. He's like, okay, whatever. He doesn't care who's walking in front of the basket or what's happening. He's just like, oh, in. And I'm just like, you know you have a lot of practice behind your putt when you're just like 20 foot or whatever. Yep, easy tap in, see it. Well, you just said you know? yesterday you made all your putts within 25 feet without really thinking about it, right? And like the thing that really changed my putt is if I'm just picking up discs that, you know, and like tossing them into the bed of my truck or just tossing them into the basket and not like really, you know, some people need to focus on the one chain link. I'm not that guy. I'm just like, just put it there, like just casually yeah. and it works. So sometimes it's I'll say that's, taking the pressure off yourself allows you to do it. Yeah, I'll say I, I did miss. There's like one really dumb. So I made, let's just say 90%. Yeah. Um, but that that's exactly right, Wes. I think the thing that's really helped my putting stay on is all I'm thinking about is my follow through. Like I'm not, I'm like, I'm visually looking at the center of the chains, but I'm thinking about like my hand is going into that basket right now. Yeah. And like that, that has really changed my confidence and like yeah there's like i'm eliminating all these other variables like okay i needed like this second chain here and what's the wind like and whatever but really at like 20 feet i just need to like my form needs to be like consistent i just need to like put the disc in through the chains and like follow through with it yeah. and i can tell immediately if i don't follow through or my hands a little to the right or whatever because i miss so y'all i'm gonna move us off of putting sorry uh, yeah Sorry. Not, big, not because not because today. it's not good conversation. Not because of that. Uh, the people but, aren't here know, for putting. The, the people, people are, here are for like, the bag. oh man, here we go. The you know, the Robbie C. He's just a stickler for putting. He doesn't want us to throw far. Uh, first off, I want everyone to throw far. I just want you to be able to make your putts. You first. get Robbie uh, and two of his students in a conversation. There's going to be putting conversation. It's just, it's inevitable. That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, we started the basket. I'll work back, everyone. So looking at your bag, Wes, um, this is one of those that I know in preparation and part of why we, we've we had to wait till episode 100, right, to get it all dialed in uh, is because not that you're a student of the show, but like when we talk about this balanced approach to a bag, mm -hmm. you really have tried to adopt this into your bag. So I think that especially on the lower part of the bag, there will be a lot less of us like going, oh, what if you did this instead of this and things like that? Because mm -hmm. those are conversations that you and I have already offline. Um, well, I, it looks really solid. I have listened to every episode the of the podcast. Like I have I took the principles early on and tried to apply them. Um, I've got my own kind of methodology, but it's it, it's heavily influenced by the podcast. So, awesome. so I, I know that we won't recommend a ton. We'll spend, honestly, we're, I want to like not move through it fast for the sake of moving through it fast. But I think the discussion amongst the three of us is going to be much more fascinating at the top end versus mm -hmm. at the bottom end, because the bottom end, the final question that we didn't end up asking is what would you say is like the biggest strength of your game? And I have an answer for you, but I would love to hear your answer as well. Um, I have been told and I agree with it that my lack of a forehand has allowed one of the strengths of my game to be a turnover backhand. Um, I, I love patent pending shots. I will happily throw it like most of my standstills end up being kind of patent pending anyway, just because it's, I think that's kind of the, the right stance to get into for a throw. Um, you know, the reason we do the X step is to kind of get in that offset stance. Um, but I, I love a good turnover. Um, yeah, that's, that would be the strongest part of my game. I would guess. Yeah. The, the only alternative I would offer is Wes's strength to his game is anytime he can throw a tomb. 
Uh, that is, if you can get that man, I've, I've heard that. I've heard that to <laughs> throw that disc, that mold. I guess I should say because you have multiple in the bag. Uh, it it showcases something that I I mentioned in a video on my channel recently of like five tips to improve, like five of my favorite tips to improve. And one of them was find a disc that you can throw 250 feet and in with absolute confidence and buy 10 of them. Uh, like push that so that you feel that, like that overwhelming confidence. And I think to even the round that we played at Peaks View, where sure, it's a shorter course, sure, like those technically like balance scales and everything. But it was me throwing my pigs versus you throwing your tombs in a comfort battle, which is yeah. like huge. And I think so, you, you got me by a stroke, which was like a putt. Yeah. So it was, it was a good time. And at that sure. point you hadn't found your confidence in your putt yet. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to get to that when we, you know, talked about them, but I guess that's a the segue we need, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's get into so it. So I, a couple things to preface my bag with, um, I am on team infinite, um, very grateful for them for supporting me. Um, if Team Infinite called me after this podcast is over and said, "Hey, you're cut. You're the worst player on the team," my bag would not change. Um, my bag was set up this way before I was on Team Infinite. Um, it's an open bag situation, so I can do, you know, whatever I want. I happen to have a lot of their molds because I like them. Um, and then when I talk about discs, like a disc being straight. Cause this is something that me and Robbie have kind of disagree on. Um, I'm talking about like 150 feet out of your hand. Is that thing turning? Is it fading? Is it going straight? Like I, I assume that all discs are going to have some fade because the physics of flight is unless you're turning it into a roller, it's going to fade a little bit at the end if it's given enough time. So yeah, it'll finish, but if it's flying straight, it's flying straight until that point. So Talking about the tomb specifically, um, I happened to find one at a used bin locally, um, and that disc has done more for my disc golf game in multiple ways than anything else that I think I've ever done or tried or whatever. Part of it because it led me to Infinite and their molds, um, and part of it because it's the way Robbie talks about his pig is the way that I, I feel about my tomb. Um, it's obviously not as overstable as a pig to start, but it's a, it's a pretty straight disc. Um, it's got a bead, so it's torque resistant. You can put some power onto it. Um, it's one of those discs that like, it can teach you what your mistake is, right? Cause it's a, it's a zero one. So it's got a little bit of stability, but it's not crazy flippy. It's not super overstable, but you know, if you're yanking over, it's going to turn. If you're throwing on too much hyzer, it's going to hyzer. Um, and so a lot of my game has been then based on the tomb. So like, if you look at my seven speeds, it's like, all right, what'll fly like the tomb, but further, you know? So mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the way that I've built my bag is the tomb is my straight putter disc. And then I go up in speed for straight discs. And then I find, all right, what's, a stable complement to the straight disc and what's a flippy complement to the straight disc. And the, uh, it, would you say the yellow one? Cause one thing that I do appreciate, um, about like someone that really knows their discs and has them seasoned and is trying to like, if you love the tomb, you can put multiple copies in Wes. If y'all are looking at the flight chart for our visual watchers, or if you head over to disc RPM to check out Wes, um, you'll find Wes fast because he has a lot of great tournament or great dies, uh, in his bag, which looks mm -hmm. incredible. Um, he also has really capitalized on what disc RPM does. Cause he also has his glow bag in there discs that are not bagged, things like that. So I appreciate that when people really try to like lean in and show, uh, so you'll see West tournament collection, but you've adjusted the numbers on the yellow tomb to being three, four minus one zero, which is a pretty big jump from one zero like to flip those numbers that yeah. hard. Um, so I'm not saying that it is your quote, precious child, but like, it yeah, is. That's okay. It's, you know, you say if I can throw a tomb, it's if I can throw the yellow tomb, it's, it's, it's it. Um, I tried to, put the numbers to where like if this disc was thrown flat how it would fly so the yellow tomb flat will, will drift 
Um, it's not going to have a hard fade on it. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to throw it on some hyzer and get that hyzer flip straight shot with it. Um, my blue tomb is newer. It's more stable. Um, the yellow one's also like 169, I think, so it's a little bit lighter. Um, Champion plastic C blend, so it's it's nice and durable, um, and it's it's held its stability for a long time, and it's really reliable for me. Okay, uh, one of the the rays is the AVRX three clone, mm -hmm. uh, and then the so the one thing that I wanted to like ask in sort of like the confusion side of things, I know I know how the Ursus flies. We'll talk about the Ursus in a second, but um the rays in the ruin anything in particular that like makes you go from one to the other yeah so the ruin the ruin is a tomb os and the rays is like an alpaca os if that makes any okay. sense so like yeah i put with alpacas which are p2s fireflies you know roaches it's that beadless kind of deep putter um the rays I'll, I'll use for like more approach shots, like maybe a hundred feet and in um, something that I'm going to throw on a hyzer. The raise is also one that feels more comfortable on a forehand if I absolutely need it. Um, whereas the ruin is going to be my overstable throwing putter. Um, three, three, okay. zero, three, I think are the numbers on that. Um, so the, the cool thing about, at least I think the cool thing about infinite is they take, Innova molds and like combine top and bottom halves from different things, um, or they're old discontinued, like this mania runs, this may or old discontinued Innova runs, things like that. So the, the tomb is a rat top and a cult bottom. So it's got a really like square corner flat top. The ruin is the rat top with a rhino X bottom. So it's got this really like flat top, sharp kind of jagged, some say it's like a mega bead because it, but it's just long. Um, yeah, it's a wall. Yeah, it's a wall. <laughs> so for my, it doesn't work on my forehand because it, you know, it hooks on the meat here in my hand. But you know, if I'm in a headwind and I need a tomb shot, I'm going to that. If I need something that's going to go straight for 200 feet and then like die and fade over, I'm going to throw that. Um, okay. So yeah, that's one's more of a, a tee shot. The other's more of an approach. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I. Brad, have you, when's the last time that you held a rhino in your hands? Um, just a few weeks ago. I, I, I don't even remember why I picked one up, but I was going by the end of a shelf. I'm like, hmm, rhino. And I picked it up. Yeah. The bead on the rhino. I, you know what? I'm a pig guy. So, and I'm not, I'm not a person who's going to openly come out and be like, I hate beads, things like that. Cause there are people that for some reason take that stance, but for the rhino nation out there, you got to let me know, like, how does that thing not shred your yeah. finger on a forehand? It does, does not feel great. Well, say, and the, the Rhino is an overstable disc on its own, and this is from the Rhino X, yeah. which is like, hey, let's take that and make it stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating. and But, you know, part of – I'll I'll say there could be jealousy because of the fact that the Rhino Nation, with that wall of extra plastic, somehow that can be molded in premium plastic, but – my babies can't. Oh, Wolves, yeah. rhinos, Sonics. Yeah, the wolf. That, they'll do anything but I a saw pig. The wolf, the wolf coming out. That's that one's like a stake to the heart a little bit. That that was. I, 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 I heard. The, I hurt for you on that one. That's fine. That's fine. They gave us Halo quote. Uh, yeah. You know. Uh, well, there's. Um, they tried there's to tell us the premium, we didn't ask specifically. There's even a premium thumb track in of a disc that's headed out. So, I mean, I'm I'm holding out hope for the pigs. There's a, it's got to work I, at some point. Insane, guys. Insane. But what's not insane is you do bag uh, some pretty interesting mids. Uh, so part of this, uh, I think initially if we looked at your mids, people would be like, oh, you don't really bag that many mids. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But I think because if we just assume that your tombs fly far and you just zh -zh 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 like yep. slot all your five speeds as if there were four speeds and all your three speeds as if there were four speeds and we just merged them. You're like, Oh yeah, I guess there really are no gaps there. Yes. Uh, like it covers itself really well. Like I can, I can get my tombs to 300 feet. Um, if I've got a little bit of elevation help, um, it's, it's not a, 
a common occurrence again, but like it's, it's possible. They're just so glidey. Um, they'll, they'll just go. Yeah. So like, as I was talking earlier, you know, the hex is, that's my long tomb. Like it's going to give me a similar shot shape to the tomb, but go a little further. And one of the things that's been happening is because I can throw the tombs as far as I can, the hex is getting less and less airtime. Um, you know, mm-hmm. pun intended, I guess, but it's just, I, I like it a lot. Um, it's yeah. still, I'm finding, I'm still working on like figuring out the gap where it covers between my tombs and then like my seven speeds. But it, it's nice to have in the bag for it. I'm like, you know, I'm, I don't have the power right now with the tomb. I, you know, or I do have the power, but I need to go 325 rather than 300 or whatever the case may be. Uh, so the Ursus, Wes, you've been an Ursus, you've been an Ursi guy for longer than most people for sure. Uh, and I, like, I literally, I think about the fact that when, uh, a, I, I've a, peer pressured uh, both of you into trying the Ursus and it hasn't struck yet. You almost, you almost have these premium Eric Oakley ones. You almost had me almost. I'm yeah. still not sold that I'm not going to bag it. So that's sell the people uh and brad talk about why or why not like where you're struggling but wes give us the elevator pitch on because eric oakley and on the ursus now uh and everyone's gonna be like oh eric brought it into light and it's like man my boy wes in west virginia has been he's been mm-hmm. pushing this thing I, hey, longer I'm in, I'm in than eric i'm in virginia that's i true, just that's happen true. to be at the part that's surrounded by west virginia on three sides so <laughs> it's you're surrounded. it's west virginia right yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's true. The Ursus is the Ursus is what I wanted a Rock Three to be. Um, I got my hands on a Rock Three, and I was like, "Oh, you know, this should go straight and give me like a reliable fade, kind of a dumpy fade. It's a zero three, right? Like, I know flight numbers are subjective is a nice way to put it." Um, but I got a rock three and it was like flippy and it was like an old Macbeth rock three that they like factory second and over stamped over. Um, and it just, it wasn't doing it for me. Um, the Ursus feels a lot like a rock three in the hand to me. Um, it is a little more stable than that. Nice flat top, uh, beaded bottom. Um, it's produced by a company called terminal velocity. Um, who has a manufacturing agreement with legacy. So my understanding is it's very similar to the recluse, which is kind of their, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's their flagship mid. I don't know a lot about legacy, but I know like if people are yeah. talking legacy, you probably heard of the recluse. Um, I know, you know, when I talk to you into trying it, Robbie, you're like, Hey, it's good, but it doesn't beat out the justice. Um, I've heard other people be like, yeah, the verdict, it's kind of in that same vein. Um, it's got, it's got that over stability, but it's still got some glide to it, which is nice. So you can, you can put it out there a little while and still rely on it to come back. Mm-hmm. I think for me, cause I was in, I was struggling finding that like overstable mid, like to replace the Bobcat. And I was like, maybe this is the time for the Ursus. And the only thing that keeps me away from the Ursus, and this is probably just a me problem is um, when I found the quake. So I have like the glow midnight flyer quake. Um, I can just throw it so much farther than I can the Ursus. And like for me, if I'm going, if I'm jumping up from like my, my overstable Envy, this is maybe like a tomb. Envy is my tomb. So um, if I'm going for like that, like overstable dumpy shot, I'm just going to throw, because I can throw my Envies really far. I'm going to throw an Envy out on Heiser, like more Heiser than I normally would to get that flight. Um, if I want that like really overstable mid range, I typically go to that if I need like the distance. Like, um, so hole two at Timbrook is a great example. I throw the quake on that and I keep, I'm gonna get an ace one day, I keep smacking the basket. But um, I like to hang it out super wide to the left, give it some air time, and then I like it to dump out at the end. So I don't want something that's gonna just die very quickly. I know, I know the Ursus has more glide than you think it would probably. Um, but for me, it's just like the quake. I could just throw so much further. It had more of a like a really straight flight than very overstable versus like for me, the Ursus was more of like overstable the whole way, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like I'm trying to think 
at Falling Creek, I want to say it's like 15. The hole after the double basket hole where mm -hmm. like yep. you've got, it's a straight shot. It's a little bit downhill, but like you can't really swing a disc around. You need it to go straight and then fade over. That's an Ursus yes. all day for me. Like when I came down there and played it, I almost aced that hole with the Ursus because that just is the shape that it does. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where yep. I'll use it for. Um, the other time it really came in handy was playing New London a couple weeks ago for like pitch outs that I needed to get a little bit of skip um, and not go super far. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll use it for like spike hyzers to get over stuff. It's kind of a utility disc for me, um, but it's mm -hmm. still, you know, reliable um when i need it my, my go-to shot is what can i throw that's just the straight gap to the basket like nine times out of ten that's what i'm trying to find so i don't do a lot of like hang it out to the right and let it crash um often if i can avoid it just because that's my play style mm -hmm. but it's i'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it you know yeah and that's that is that is what i would tell people if you when I think of that utility disc world and the Ursus didn't make my bag, not because it's not a great disc, but because that slot is very utility esque for me. Uh, like when I think about all the greater Birmingham area, so we have 10 to 15 courses that that includes. And when I think of holes that I'm like, Oh, I'm going to throw that slot on that hole. I can think of literally three tee shots and two of them are on the same course, but I can think of three tee shots across all of that, that I use that disc. And so if I don't play those courses or play those layouts very often where I need that shot, that utility slot for me becomes something of like, I'm not going to be dialing that in at all times. And so when you go to it, you want to have that comfort in the disc. So if you do not have that shot in your bag yet, the Ursus, 100%. I think you should try it. FoundationDisc.com. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Do we have Ursi yep. still? Yep. Uh, looking at them right now. So if you, FoundationDisc.com, you can use uh, Foundation Care. So it's a literally a risk-free thing uh, to try that disc out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say give it a chance because it, it very well could fight in it's there. It's a good disc. It's really if, a good if disc. If you've got a forehand, a lot of the people who are on Team Terminal Velocity with me, you know, if you're a forehand player, if you're a flex thrower, the Ursus is definitely a disc for you. It's a mid that will yeah. hold up to a powerful forehand or a, a flex shot. Yeah. Nine times out of 10. Yeah. Cause if I'm having to throw a backhand with that slot, normally I just disc up to my felon mm -hmm. and let it do the same thing on a backhand because the felon's going to skip harder than the Ursus anyways. Like, just because of that bladed rim, things like that. Yeah. So, one of the reasons I don't bag a felon firebird type disc is because. I would get a lot of early releases with them and the Ursus, I can get to almost that same distance, but it's chunkier and it doesn't fall out of my hand as I'm swinging it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So could be resonating with a lot of people right now. Uh, sure. Could be resonating with a lot of people. So, uh, all right. So I want to, like I said, I want to make sure that we get the time to kind of discuss, uh, I'm chatty. My discuss bad. the well. No, 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 no. That's I. It. I want. I want the chattiness, Wes. Hear me when I say that. Yeah. I just want it to be. I want to. I want to make sure that we're not going to get to like. Oh snap! It's like 45 minutes into this episode, and uh oh, gotcha. we <laughs> we haven't talked about uh yeah. the the recommendation disc because I think it's going to be. We already know basically what Brad's going to recommend, but I want to just like gifts because i know that we've talked about this possibility of the disc before um and while i think that your fairways from an outside perspective i still believe even as your coach that your fairway drivers are the most confusing part of your bag like it bewilders me but i also know for you that like all of those discs are so dialed in for you that like there is not your there's no shot confusion in your head when you're walking up because you're like oh this does this this does this this does this it's all thought through really well um so what i got to do is i got to get you to come on my channel to talk about that uh just because i think that we can give more light to it okay whatever there uh so um quick highlight uh that i really want to talk about is honestly the Cervini Roadrunner It Trio. 
Okay. Like just because once again, I think when you get into your exoduses, like they are all so perfectly seasoned, even to the one that I know you like lost and had to come back yeah. to you. Like what a, what a great moment that was. Um, but your dynasties and your thundies, like, like I said, I, we can spend 45 minutes just talking about those six discs. Yeah. Uh, so I know that neither of us have the self-control to keep ourselves <laughs> from that. Uh, so talk to me about Cervini Roadrunner It because that side of the bag, I think people just try to throw one disc at it and they're like, all right, I got it covered. Yeah. Check. So, I mean, a lot of that comes from not having a forehand. So one of the things that I find myself doing a lot is a, a hyzer flip that will stand up and then turn. And one of the things that I, I've gotten – pretty decent at, I think for my rating, my skill level is knowing how much hyzer to give a certain disc so that it turns at the right time. So it hits the gap when you need it to hit the gap past the certain tree. So like, even if you go down to my mids, Stingray, Rolo's kind of a utility disc going the other direction. Um, but the, I mean, that, that's what it comes down to is what those are. Like the Roadrunner is in and out of the bag, I'd say more. It's in the bag currently, so I listed it on there. There was a while where I was like, hey, let's just lean into the it, you know, and then let's lean into the Cervini for longer shots. Um, and then there, there would just come times where I was like, you know, I, I need a little more distance and flip than, and a little more flip than the Cervini will give me, a little more distance than the it will give me. Um, just to shout them out at the same time, the Cervini is also made by Terminal Velocity Discs. Um, I bagged their entire lineup the Ursus and the Cervini. <laughs> um, it is a, a flippy 10 speed. It's, it's kind of like an Avenger SS, I would guess. Um, maybe like a beast, little, little flippier beast, um, that kind of range, but, um, it's a, it's a hyzer flip to go. Um, that one I can get some decent distance on. Um, I would say, especially like in the woods, my 10 speeds are, what I reach for the most. They give me control plus distance. Um, I, I've always thought of fairway and control drivers as kind of a different slot, but I know a lot totally. of people disagree with that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where those go. The Roadrunner, you know, if I need a roller, I can also work on that. The Rolo as well. The Rolo is just fun. And like, if you haven't thrown a Rolo, it's a good time, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how all those work out is, like I said, I try to take, you know, my five, the spine of my bag, what goes down the middle there and then say, okay, what's a flippier version of this? What's a more stable version of this and go all the way up. Yeah, no, that's, I, I am here for that. I've, I've told people quite often, um, when they're like newer to the game, they're like, I need a forehand. I need a forehand. I need a forehand. And I'm like, if you, while I agree with that, learn turnover backhands as soon as you possibly can, because if you have a forehand, it's so much easier to just forego the turnover backhand to just like try to finesse a forehand to do that. And there are just yeah. shots where the turnover backhand is the play, even if like a forehand could work there. Kind of yeah, they're, they're not replaceable um, shot shapes. Like there's definitely times where I'm like, man, I yeah. really wish I had a forehand here because you know, if I f turn this over as far as it needs to, to go right, I'm risking it cut rolling back, you know? So it's, mm -hmm. yeah, they're definitely both needed skills, especially the higher you get into disc golf. Yeah. Or, and I mean, and the converse of that is I need to throw a forehand here, but there's no way for me to throw the forehand and have it move in that direction without just fading out and dumping yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Um, the slow pan turnover where, is a beautiful thing. That's where I think I'm again, where I'm starting to grow is like being able to tell the difference between those two. I think I'm just now starting to get it after three years of playing. I'm like, Oh, they're not the same shot. Okay. That makes sense now. Especially like a place like New London, I think you really, where you have like a high skill level of like course design, you really see like, okay, that's that's the, the difference between these two shots. Well, like you look at hole, like, uh, is hole it, three. Yeah, I was going to say hole three is a turnover. It's not a forehand because you've got OB to the right. You throw that spiking forehand and it skips OB. 
there you go. There's another bogey for you yeah. after the and three you you've already to, taken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you try to throw the pushing forehand, and you're like, well, I'll just throw something that stands up a little bit, and it stands up at all, and that back wall comes into play so fast. Uh, like, that's – that is – of the first three holes, that is the hole that I fear the most every single time because I'm like, I I should be able to birdie this, but by golly, am I just going to grip lock this turnover just straight OB anyway? But, but then so, you go to hole four, right? and hole four is a forehand. The turnover Correct, yeah. does not work great there unless you get real sneaky through some trees. Yeah. Because yeah. once again, that back wall, you need the space. Yeah, so it's yeah. just you identify – identify see the places things like that um so let's talk upper end of the bag here we're gonna we're gonna go up to this realm um so talk about let's talk about you have the pharaoh the emperor and the wraith on one side but the gap is pretty obvious on the flippy side of things and i know that's what you lost so as you talk about the three discs on that side, talk about what the disc that you lost does to hopefully help Brad see what we were going for. Yeah. So um, the Wraith, I would kind of slot as my overstable Aztec. Um, I, you know, it's an 11 speed, the Aztec's a 10, but that's kind of where I mentally think of it is, hey, this is an Aztec shot, but it's into the headwind. Go with the Wraith. Um, whereas my 12 and 13 speeds would be like the next slot up. So um, the Emperor being a destroyer type disc, um, the Pharaoh being a straighter version of that. Um, I'm, you know, this is just my opinion. I'm 90% sure that the charger that Innova came out with last year is just a Pharaoh that they wanted to sell at Innova's store instead of just at infinite. Um, it's a negative one, two, which is my f- hot takes, hot takes. <laughs> it's my favorite flight number of a disc uh, is a negative one, two. I, I love those numbers. Um, it's, it's a little fast for my arm. I think most of the time, but it was the headwind version of the disc that I lost, which was a one sixty seven star turn that I had been beating in for three years or so. Um, it was a hyzer flip to like, I would throw it on 25, 30 degrees of hyzer. It would flip up cruise turn. And then that two fade would kick in at the end and it would fight out. Um, most of the time on the course, if I'm going to hit 400 and it's a, a flat ground, calm wind situation, that's the disc I'm throwing. Um, and, and that's the shot shape I'm throwing. Um, that hyzer flip shot is honestly where I feel comfortable. Um, my execution of it isn't always great. You know, we, Robin and I have talked, I, I swing on hyzer and then I drop my arm as soon as I release the disc. So it kind of comes out a little flatter than, or possibly any, mm-hmm. but that one I, was one that I definitely would make sure that I swung finished on hyzer. Um, and it was, it's a sad day that I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it, it gave me an opportunity to be here today. So I'm, I guess I'm grateful for that. And, Hey, Oh, you're about to be grateful. That's all I got to say. Well, and that's, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm in the birdie fam, shout out to the birdie fam. Birdie fam's great. I asked for some recommendations, tried to be like, all right, I could very easily just get another turn, work on it, get it beaten in, you know, go for a strike, something like that, which, you know, I've, I've thrown both of those. And I was like, let's try. I'm, I'm a little, uh, plastophobic. I like, I like Innova made plastic. If you can't tell, it feels the best in my weird hands. I don't know. Um, I, I don't like the feel of this craft. Uh, most trilogy feels kind of cheap to me in the hand. Don't know why it just does. I like the Innova plastic, um, MVP being a second, um, as you can tell by my one MVP disc that I bag. Um, but so yeah, let's, I figured let's open it up, see what options present themselves. And worst case scenario, if I hate it, I can always go buy another turn at Dick's Sporting Goods whenever I want. Or at foundation or disc. Foundation disc. That's, that's what I was going to recommend. <laughs> um, point made, it's very right. easily available to find a turn. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. So today, 
we tried the Enigma from Discmania. Okay. This was brand new. I found in the used bin. I thought it was pretty sick. Uh, and then uh, the Strive from Latitude 64. So that was a fun day. It was a fun field work day. Robbie, I'll let you kind of take it uh, and guide the conversation because I do, don't want to straight fanboy this immediately. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll i save the comment that I... Because I think I actually texted you before you threw... I put some high expectations on one of these discs. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big thing is I want blank to be included because I think, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'll share that comment at the end. Uh, so let's talk about plastic feel because uh, for our plastophobic friend uh, who is, uh, you know, averse to those, uh, we're, we have two discs coming out of the trilogy warehouse of uh, the house of discs house of area discs. uh i guess we can officially call it now instead of like oh it's just uh, the trilogy. duplex of factories <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i call them yeah. i call them pentology now not trilogy so just <laughs> <laughs> uh, they i i you know they're gonna keep buying brands like i feel it they're gonna become the gateway of the of europe uh yeah. like they just make everybody stuff so mm. um talk about he said the cheapness of plastic. And honestly, as someone who all my drivers are a trilogy, uh, like, and honestly, specifically DD, I realized that the other day, like I don't have any like latitude or uh, West side. Right. It's just all DD. Um, so uh, talk about the feel of these two plastics and sure. comparisons you might make to other plastic types. Should I do like ASMR? Like, <laughs> yeah. So that that's the Enigma. Um, so I will say the um, Enigma. I mean, it's neo plastic, I believe, is what this one is, and it feels fine. Like it just feels like a maybe not quite as stiff as Champ, maybe like a little bit more gummy, but not much. So it's like very similar to like a a Champ. Um, and then I will say like I'll get there in a second. Uh, anything from the new like Royal line and Latitude 64 is maybe the best best plastic I've ever felt. To be honest with you, it it's not too gummy, it's not too stiff, it's not slick. Um, it just feels smooth. I guess that's the way I would describe it. It's just smooth. Um, I will say um, rim wise feel. So I believe the Enigma is a 12 speed, right, Robbie? Ah. Uh... Yes. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Flame us in the comments, but I, I forgot. Jason actually even told me before I left and I forgot already. But um, the Enigma feels like a way wider rim than the Strive, which is a 13 speed, which is kind of fun. Um, also, like there's something about the Strive that like really feels okay, is obviously wider than a fairway. But what I'm getting at is like, you know how like a, a fairway has like that like kind of sleek nose almost. Um, like it feels that way. It doesn't feel like I'm throwing a high speed disc, really. Um, that's, which is awesome. That's one of the things I like about ten speeds generally is it'll it'll yeah, go far, yeah. but it doesn't feel super clunky in your hand. I think it's why I like the vulture so much, to be honest with you. Because it, it has that feel. Um but yeah, uh, for visual people here, like you can see there's not a lot of dome or anything. It's just like pretty sleek. Um the Enigma even has a little bit more dome to it. You can kind of see there mm -hmm. uh, if you're watching. Also, the Enigma has like a, it's not a rough like bevel on the bottom, uh, but just enough that I kind of notice it. It's not a bead, right? But there's like enough plastic there that I notice it, whereas the Strive, I do not. Um, they both are good feeling discs, but if I had to like give one to the other, like Strive definitely feels better than the Enigma. And I like Neo plastic for what it's worth. I throw a Neo Origin. Yeah. Now, Interesting. Uh, flight numbers on the Enigma, 12, 5, minus 1, 2. Mm. So, Wes's mm. favorite. Wes's I do favorite. like those numbers. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. For, for uh, eight of us. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly. That's the beauty of flight numbers. Other companies, but. Yeah. So, um, we... You got to the field, you throw them, and one of the things here is we got to remember, like we're talking distance drivers. So, Brad, you had the potential to throw far, but I would say it's definitely been something we've talked about, uh, even on podcasts, outside of podcasts, of you kind of removing some of these faster discs from your bag out of a like 
yes, you can get distance out of them sometimes, but it's just easier to get distance out of your, your 10 speeds or your nine speeds, things like that. So Mm -hmm. what was kind of your like thought process heading into the field, knowing like it's distance driver time? Well, it's funny because I took two fun discs to throw today, which I don't normally do for field work, but they're, um, the, the, the new proto drive, which is an 11 speed. And then the OLF, which I think is a nine speed, maybe. I'm, I'm 90% not sure that the OLF is very similar to that Aztec that I throw. I think it's a 10. It, it might be a 10. I don't, it it I might be look. the same I, disc. All, all I knew is I felt it. I'm like, this feels really good. I should try. I want to throw this. And Jason and I have talked about throwing it a few times. So I'm like, I'll throw it. But what I wanted to do, because I knew what's, it's like, sort of flippy but not like super flippy uh, my, i was trying to get in my mindset of like okay here's two discs that are supposed to be flippy but they're still distance drivers throw those to get warmed up and then throw these like 12 and 13 speeds so that was my mentality today was okay and then like this drive theoretically i'm like okay well this should be like destroyer-esque right like you know it's probably going to be beefy for me because i don't i mean destroyers are very beefy for me same thing with the enigma like i'm like okay these are going to be all beefy right so not true which kind of surprised me but we'll get there but that was kind of my my expectation was i'm not gonna be able to throw these very far they're gonna be beefy maybe we're looking for like a wind fighter i knew you throw farther than me Wes, so i'm like obviously Wes throws farther than me so maybe we're like taking that into consideration so i wasn't exactly sure other than the one comment made robbie made about one of these discs but that didn't like give me anything so wait, I'm, is the o go ahead Go ahead. I was just gonna say, we're, I, I need, I need that long flight flippy boy. That's that's what I'm, I'm needing here. So, yeah. Uh OLF. When we say Orion LF, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah, same yes. thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, nine five minus one two. So maybe it's a dynasty. There you go. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Again, those discs aren't necessarily important to this, but I just, I, I felt like I needed discs to throw with these ones today for whatever reason, just to like show me where I'm going. If that makes sense. Yeah, totally. So we, you get out there, you throw both of them. Uh, initial thoughts after your first few throws. So Enigma pretty much threw exactly like I expected it to. Uh, and it was definitely overstable, not as overstable as I thought it was going to be, but it was definitely overstable for me. Um, the strive, like magic like straight magic like i threw it the first time because again i'm expecting this to be like beefy like whatever i throw it it flips and turns and goes forever and then fades out at the end and i was like well okay maybe that was like a fluke right i mean you can go back and watch the live i wes i know you ducked out because you didn't want any spoilers um so i don't know if you saw me throw it the first time or not but i was like i want to Okay. I want to go back and watch it afterwards. If it's yeah, available. go back and watch it after this. Uh, yeah, it's live on the uh, in the bag Instagram, and I was like, okay, that was really good. Maybe that's a fluke, right? So I actually went to my OG location today because I knew I was like, hopefully I have some distance, but I need some like freedom to throw these discs. I don't want to go through a van window or go into the woods or anything like that. So I it's at a, a football field, and I was like wow like i almost got this like end zone end zone first throw great this is i shouldn't be able to do this and then i proceeded to just like the next several throws of this thing just get progressively further and further sorry farther and farther down the field and they were just like i could throw i wasn't even hitting this thing at like full power i'm hitting it like 75 percent and like kind of smoothing it and it's like turning forever and then fading, like having a nice fade at the end. It was like pretty incredible. Um, it felt good coming out of my hand. I didn't feel like I had to kill it, which is what I usually feel like with a distance driver, which is why I stay away from them. And the flight is just so good. Even on like throwing it on Annie, it held the Annie, but it came out at the end. So it's like not a disc I'm going to be worried about like turning over at all. Especially, I would say someone like US who has more angle control than I do you're going to really be able to like manipulate this disc. Like it's going to be like a workhorse, I think for you, because I'm still shocked at like how well I threw it, how great the flight was and how much d- easy distance I got with it. Like, I don't know. I would, other than my, like my FD, like my beaten FD, it's kind of like easier distance for me, but 
I've not really experienced that out of a driver driver before. It was kind of incredible. And I would say for my, for whatever my opinion's worth on the flight numbers, completely wrong, completely wrong. I, so, I would say probably negative one, two is probably more accurate or like maybe like negative for me. Yeah. Negative one, two is probably, I would give it like six glide because it just like stayed in the air forever. And I don't think it feels like a 13 speed personally. So for this, for this slot, I know even Wes mentioned in like, there's confidence in your control drivers. You can throw those, but sometimes the shot calls for it. You can open mm-hmm. up, you can see the, the fly to the disc, things like that. Like, right. I feel like when we've talked about your game plan, even playing courses, Wes, it's like, okay, is it worth going up to the Pharaoh or is it worth going up to um, the Emperor, things like that, or even bringing the turn into play, stuff like that? Uh, Because if thrown well, it's going to be perfect for that shot. But if you throw your Aztec or your Dynasty, if you throw those poorly, it's still going to be an overall better shot. Um, So Brad... Obviously, the reason you don't just throw it once and go like, all right, cool, let's recommend this disc. You throw it several times. Mm-hmm. How did they fly if you didn't get a hold of the Enigma or if you didn't get a hold of the Strife? I would say the Enigma, if I didn't get a hold of it, it just is overstable, like just exactly what I expected it to. So I, I did feel like I really had to get behind the Enigma to even get some straightness out of it, which I could. It just took more effort. Even the Strive, if I didn't super get a hold of it, I still got turn and I still got fade. Like, it wasn't like I had to, like, kill it to get this flight. Like, it just was pretty, again, I think I said this on the live. It wasn't effortless, but it was easy, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, I, I I didn't feel like it was going to slip out of my hand. I also didn't feel like I had to, like, just, like, yank it and, like, grip lock it into infinity to get it to do what I, what I wanted it to do, which is really nice. So, Wes, you're hearing all this. What are your thoughts about... <laughs> What could be going down? Uh, I mean, my initial thought is this better not awaken anything in me. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah. He's a trilogy guy now. Yeah, I can't afford to yeah. switch. Completely yeah, switch over. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll check back in in a month and you're just like latitude 64 only. <laughs> I've got bazooka glasses and I'm just, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. No, I mean, the, the strive has come highly recommended from a lot of people. Um, one guy locally did say, Oh, it's more stable than some people let on. Um, but I, that's one guy. I, you know, other people have said, oh, no, you'll, you know, it'll fly like your turn or it'll fly, you know, similar to that. Um, you know, I, this is definitely one that upon recommendation was in consideration. A couple of the other discs that I was like thinking about trying were like, you know, a wave, um, a mystere. You know, other things like that that maybe won't take as long to beat in to the turn. Like maybe if it's a little bit slower, it'll give me a little more turn out of the box kind of deal. Um, but no, it, it sounds awesome. I mean. Yeah, I would be very surprised if you weren't turning this very easily immediately. Yeah. Like, again, I got a tiny baby arm and I was like turning it easily, pretty easily. Um, and it was pretty effortless distance for me. So like. I really feel like it's going to be like, it may not like solve your heartache of the turn, but it's going to be, I think it's going to be close based on what you descri- described it as. All right. All right. Sounds good for sure. And also props to Robbie for keeping the second disc a secret and then having that disc be the enigma. I mean, just kudos. Mm-hmm. The word play is fantastic. I'm a content creator, Wes, is what I yeah. do. You know? <laughs> uh, that's uh I'm here. I'm here for the mystery. So, well, Wes, we want to say thanks for coming on, man. Really appreciate you. Uh, all you do for me, uh, for the birdie fam, uh, for team Atlas, uh, and excited for excited for you to get these discs and hopefully, hopefully it fills a need. Well, I'm, I hope it does as well. And, you know, just for the, for the benefit of the audience, keep supporting these dudes. They're two of the best guys I've ever met in the sport of disc golf, genuine giving, which we'll is, Team in the bag, Team Robbie, Team Brad, Team Atlas. Support them. Buy their stuff. Just do it. They deserve it. We appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. We can't wait to have you back on and see how this does. This will be one we got to like earmark Robbie. We're like we got to get Wes back on in a bit. Just we, I got to know. This one I have to know. I'm sure you'll let us just know, but 
we got lots of people. I now have ways of contacting you. For you. I'll send a smoke signal or yeah. something. Yeah, right. That when it, you know, when it lands in your true. yard in Lynchburg because I threw it, you know, three hours south, then you'll know. Right. It it's possible. You know, airstreams, thermodynamics, um, spe- physics, science, chemistry. It'll happen. But we'll see you, Wes. Thanks for coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Okay, right. now that that guy's gone, oh, <laughs> thank you. No, ah, I love Wes. I was yeah. so, so grateful for Great him. dude. He's done a lot for everybody, and he does a lot for his disc golf in his area, too. So, good Absolutely. dude. Um, I have to say, there's not a ton of times I feel this way, but this is, like, one of those times that I'm, like, really having a hard time, like, sending that exact disc to Wes. I'm like... <laughs> Do I describe another strive and send it to him? I, I might have to. I don't know. I don't know that I can. Listen, if we don't have like one <laughs> that's the exact like similar one, I'll send him this one. But like, I'm like, I feel like I really like uh, unlock something today. And I know, I know it's probably not that disc, right? I mean, that exact disc. But yeah. no, I feel like I'm sending like my C line FD to him. And which I would do. I would do that for Wes, but I'm having a hard time. I'm having some separation anxiety with this strive today hey, because that's... I'm just like, did I just change everything? So uh, yeah. I don't know. I will but, say if you, if you end up sending him another one, one thing that I have found with the Royal line is that similarly to the, uh, C line stuff where the color does have some effect on it, send him a blue one if you do not send that original one uh because definitely important uh the the quote that i'll share now that we've we've walked through it is i said the big thing that i want because normally how this works y'all is i will send brad a list of like five six molds and i'm like we should need two of these Mm -hmm. and lots of times i'll send like i really want like i usually whatever i send first in that list brad usually includes um, mm-hmm. because there's a reason usually that I like put it first in the list kind of a yeah. deal. Um, but there have been times where it's like, well, we just don't have the first two discs that are listed. So we end up going down the line. Uh, and so part of this is I literally, I thought the strive could fit Wes's need. So I actually texted Jason before I even texted Brad to be like, Jason, do y'all have strives in stock? Because if mm-hmm. you do, go ahead and grab one. And so he sent a picture and he put it on ABB's desk. And so when I texted Brad, I texted him all the lists and I was like the Strive and the Enigma, which were the first two choices. Uh, and then I said the X3, the Curl, the Gateway Journey. Um, and I said, but the big thing is I want the Strive included because I think that it has the potential to be the disc of the year. I, I would not argue after throwing that today. I would not argue. And I'll be honest, that statement made me very hypercritical of it because I was like, okay, that's pretty high praise. We got it. Again, it's a 13 speed. I don't, I'm like, okay, maybe the disc of the year for Robbie or something, right? Or maybe the disc of the year for people that can throw 13 speeds, but it's a good disc. I mean, that may be one of the better discs I've ever thrown on in the bag. My, my first time that I threw the strive, I, so, uh, trilogy house of disc or whatever one of their marketing guys basically sent out this email in like november and was like hey we have this royal box coming out and it has the strive prototype the brave prototype um it had like an honor and a special plastic a glory and a special plastic or it was a mitt and then two putters uh whatever they're yeah. the savior yeah it was a savior yeah. in base plastic um and then some like a hope or something but anyways so they sent it out and they were like, if you want one of these boxes, just let us know. We appreciate you as creators. If you want to make content with it, fantastic, please do. But we also just want you, this to be in your hands so that you can hype the discs up when they come out. Uh, so I signed up for a box and I filmed a, a yeah, so I filmed a video with it um, and I forgot to record, like hit record on my mics. So I shot the whole video no audio and i'm just kicking myself because my first throw with the strive i didn't look at the flight numbers i just pulled them out of the box and ripped it and i was like i'll throw it on heiser big spike heiser line it stood up it flexed out and it was well over 400 feet for me like i hit a fence that was never in my mind a possibility and i was Mm -hmm. like 
this disc is kind of gross. Uh, like, okay, cool, 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 cool. So, uh, yeah, Strive is, Strive is nuts, y'all. And they're in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with a lot of other stuff, right? Um, so, yeah, quickly going through, we have quite a few things. Hey, if you haven't signed up for our text deals yet, make sure you do that. Uh, we had a very spe uh, special release this week that you cannot buy on our site. Uh, you can only buy vending or in person in our store. And we open up the text deal folks. So it's free to sign up to that. Just we'll, we send out a text deal every week. If you're a Heiser Club member, you get that deal early and early access to that deal ahead of everybody. But we send those deals out every uh, Wednesday and you never know what's going to be in there. It could be stuff for like way that's way discounted. It could be like new releases before maybe the, it, it would be foundation releases, right? But before they drop on Friday, new apparel, new merch, whatever, new accessories. You never know what you're going to get in there. Um, so yeah, this week was really cool. So make sure you sign up for those. Um, but uh, speaking of like Strive and things like that, we had a huge uh, trilogy restock. We had, we had uh, Braves and Strives and Explorers and all kinds of very cool trilogy. A lot of tour series stuff. Um, uh, the Yakut Simarot Brave looks so sick. Um, I'm, I'm staying away from the Brave because I know the minute I throw another Brave, I'm going to love it and I'm going to want to throw it. So that's, I got to stay away from, but if you don't have like an FD like disc in your bag, that's going to be a great one for you to try. And there's um, Kevin a Kiefer of, Orbit Strives, right? I'm pretty sure that's Kevin's disc. I'll look it up. You keep going. I'll, I'll yeah, have no, an answer for that. It's an Orbit. It's a tour one, but they look amazing. Yeah. Yaku might've been a different one. Now that I think about that. Anyway, all those new discs, uh, they're up on the site, uh, ready and available. A ton of Orbit, some Kristen uh, Graces, uh, Silverlot Rives, all that stuff's up there. We've been filling in some like random uh, stock disc craft, some like ESP and Z stuff that we haven't had for a minute. It's going up on there. Um, you know, uh, new apparel's up on the site. We've got Jester disc on the site. We put some new mint on there. Um, we're just getting right now. We're kind of in that season of like releases are happening. We're restocking. We're getting like regular stock um, pushed back in because of the you know summer season. Um, new patches, new minis. You know, you name it. It's all on the site again. Uh, recently restocked is always your best friend. So make sure you're checking that out. Um, and yeah, make sure you. Uh, I think all the in the bag stuff sold out. Thank you all so much, uh, disc wise. Thank you so much for that. Make sure you pick up a mini and a patch. We have those along with any of your favorite foundation podcasts or brands. We have uh, all that sitting in there. And, you know, looking forward to got a lot of fun stuff in the works. We we have um, some custom stamp stuff for the text deals only. We've got other uh, custom stamp stuff coming in um, for you, you Berg fans. Just spoiler there. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, Check it out. Um, again, check if you're in the U.S., you can check out any new disc, any new molds, risk-free um, with Foundation Care. It's just as simple as buying the disc that automatically is included if you're a U.S. customer. And if you throw it and you don't love it, you just fill out the form on the website. Jason will get you um, a gift card sent out. You can purchase a, a disc that you know and love. But if you go try that disc out and you love it, um, what are they going to do with it, Robbie? If it's good, you keep it in the bag. We have... Uh... Tour Series Strive, Kevin Kiefer. Tour Series Brave, Yakub Simran, Rives, and the Graces. Y'all, these discs and Glories and Claymores yep. and Trusts. Guys, it's nuts. These it's discs wild right now. Beautiful. Yeah, there I can't even a, keep track of all of them. So. There is a black Tour Series Strive that is available, y'all. Someone needs to buy that Frisbee. Uh, yes. It is gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous. So, all right. If it's good, keep it in the bag. These are definitely going in our bag. We will see you guys for episode 102. Yeah.